Hi, this is Stephen Brower, uh, continuing to look at Chapter 4. Um, we'll look at here different job scheduling algorithms. And so what we're going to look at are different ways the operating system decides how to bring a job from the hold state to the ready state. And the other thing we'll take a look at is how it decides when there are multiple jobs in the ready state, how to then handle each of those so that um, the next job uh, or the next process will be running. Um, so we'll look at a series of algorithms. Um, first come, first serve. The idea is a job is submitted, it's brought into the system as ready, it runs, and it completely runs until it finishes. Then whatever is next gets submitted and it will run, etc. Um, so even though there might be some jobs waiting here that can be turned around quickly, uh, it's only going to be taking the next job, the next job, the next job, really the first come, first serve. With shortest job next, now, this is the part that might seem strange in a Windows environment, but in the old days with batch systems, especially if there are processes that have been run a number of times, we may have an estimate of how long something may take. So in the old days, we filled out these things called JCL, Job Control Language Cards, and we would say, well, well this we think is going to take X amount of time to run. And so when the operating system is looking at everything in the holding states, it's going to look at those estimates of what has been submitted and then really de decide, okay, which is the shortest job next, and that's the one it sends through the, the, the system. Now, that is only as accurate as the estimates that were submitted. Um, and although it was kind of unethical, what some people would do is they'd submit a job that they wanted done first, say it was a short amount of time, even though it took a long time, just so they can get their job done. Again, not exactly uh, ethical. Uh, priority scheduling would be that there's a whole bunch of jobs that are submitted, and then what the operating system will do is take the most important jobs, whatever has highest priority, and then it'll route that through the system. Um, now, whether or not there is preemption says whether or not if there's something that has been running, whether it will get kicked back to a ready state, and then something else will be brought through and then brought to running. Um, so priority scheduling without preemption is that once it does take something, it will finish, and then it'll look at the jobs that are remaining and take the one with the highest priority and take that one through. With preemption, um, if as a process, let's say a low priority process is running and a higher, higher priority process is submitted, then um, that higher priority process will be put back to the ready queue, and then that, I'm sorry, the lower priority process be put to the ready queue, that higher priority process will be brought uh, through. Um, in terms of shortest remaining time, again, this is another one of those preemption ones, um, and that is what the operating system will look at is for the jobs that are in the ready state, for the jobs that are submitted, uh, which is the one that is estimated to take the least amount of time to complete, and that's the one that uh, it, it will run. And part of the idea behind that is if there is something that's taking up a whole bunch of time and then a short job comes along, that short job will be handled. Uh, round robin, which is something I alluded to in the prior video, and the idea of round robin is that every process will get a slice of the CPU, meaning it will be in the running state for a given chunk of time. So let's just say it's like 100 milliseconds or, or whatever is appropriate for the operating system and, and what's running. But uh, whatever's running will get a slice of the CPU, then a time interrupt takes place, it goes back to the ready state, the next process then gets brought in. So this way there's an equal amount of time given to every process. If there is a short process that comes through, and let's say it just goes back you know, here a couple of times, eventually it will finish, and if there is a long one, at least it's not going to be stealing the CPU because a, a period of time is given to other uh, processes that run. And by the way, it's more than a side, I think there's an aside in the book, um, there are, uh, in Windows there's a way to say whether, um, or, or, or to, to sort of give some higher slice of the CPU to some processes uh, and, and lower to uh, other. Um,